Hey, and welcome to another data structures lesson. And today we are going to be going over hash maps. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing you want to know is what are we talking about when we talk about hash maps? So first off, what is a map? Uh, well, a map is just an abstract data type, which basically means it's just an interface uh, that allows for multiple implementations. Okay. And hash map is one of those implementations of a map. Now, a map by itself just uses key value pairs to store data in an associative array. Okay, so in the back, um, in the background of it, it's just an array, all right? And each of those indexes in the array are what we call a bucket. And a bucket can hold a collection of key value pairs. Each index is a collection of key value pairs, okay? So then what, do, what does the hash mean in hash map? Well, hash is, the hash in hash map stands for hashing, and that's just a way to map keys uh, to the indexes in the map using uh, what's called a hashing function, which we'll get into, okay? All right, so hashing. Uh, now in a map, we, so because it's an array in the background, that means it's a finite size, right? So it goes from zero to n minus one, where n is the size of the array. So if we have an array of four, then the indexes would be 0, 1, 2, 3, OK? Um, and one thing to note about hash map is the keys don't have to be integer values, all right? There are, um, the hash function takes care of that if it's not an integer and converts it to an integer, OK? Uh, so just keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be an integer. Uh, one other important thing when talking about hash maps is collisions, all right? So we, we want to minimize collisions. So what is a collision? If we have two different keys that go through the hash function, which we'll talk about, and returns an integer, well, that integer becomes the index in the associative array. Well, if two different keys come out with the same index, that means we're trying to put them into the same bucket in the array. That's called a collision, okay? And we'll get into that. All right, so there are two important functions when we're talking about, um, uh, ha about the hash function. It's or two components when we're talking about hash function. The first one is the hash code, and the second one is the compression function. All right. So let's look at an example now. Uh, so say we have um, a an array of size six, so indexes zero through five. So this is our hash map. Okay, this is the starting array size for our hash map. Now let's say we want to insert. So well, the correct method is put. That's typically how. That's typically the function call is called put. So you're going to put a key value pair where the key is 5 and the value is, value is A. So what hash map does, it puts it into this hash function, which is composed of two components like we just talked about. So the first one is the hash code. So hash code takes in one parameter, and that's the key. So in this case, it's a 5. All right, I'm just using integer values, but again, it doesn't have to be an integer value. Uh, and so it takes in the key. Uh, whatever that key is, it turns it into an integer. And now that, now so we're going to say the variable i is equal to some integer that that hash code produced. Then, um, then what happens is that integer doesn't have to be within the range of the array size yet. It could be negative or it could be bigger than the array size. So right here, the size is 6. Uh, if the number, if the index, that the integer that just produced is 7, that's bigger than the array size, so, we, it, so it won't be able to be inserted into one of those indexes because it's larger. So you get like an out-of-bounds exception, okay? Um, so that's where the compression function comes in. We take the output integer from the hash code, so the integer, the variable i, we insert that into the compression function, and all that does is it out, It now converts, makes sure that that integer value is in the range um, of the array. So here it'd be 0 and 5, OK? So it's going to be in the range of 0 and 5, all right? Um, so let's take, uh, so now let's look at what can happen if uh, we have a collision, OK? Which is whenever we try to have the same or two different keys into the same index, all right? So here we already know that we have 
that we tried to insert um, the key value pair 5a, and we tried to uh, put it through the hash function, and it came out um, with the value of 1 as the integer. So that 1 means that we inserted that into the corresponding index in the array, which is index 1. Okay, So that's where it's stored right here. Now let's say we have another key value pair we want to insert. In this case, um, it's two, uh, the key value pair 2b. And it just so happens, this is, I don't know if this is correct or not. This is just an example, all right, to show you what a how to uh, deal with a collision. So now let's say we insert the key value pair, pair 2b, and the output after going through the hash code and the compression function is 1 as the integer, okay? So that means that we now need to put this key value pair into the same index that's already occupied by five, the key value pair 5a. This is a collision because something already exists there and we're trying to put something else there. Now, there are different ways to handle this um, because you want to think about worst case scenarios, right? If all key value pairs go into the same bucket and you have to search for it, you know, there's another data structure behind there. It's a lot of times, like I'll talk about one now, called like singly linked list, right? So the worst case scenario is you have to go traverse all the way to the end of the singly linked list just to retrieve one value, okay? Uh, so, and then we have all this extra space that's not even occupied. So uh, a topic of discussion that could be its own video is how to deal with collisions. Now there are, uh, there are a couple ways, all right? So again, we have the same key value pairs we just used, all right? The first one, or there's several ways, but I'm going to talk about two of them. So the first one is called separate chaining. Now what this means is that, like we just said, we have a singly linked list for each bucket, okay? So now this means that we can have multiple key value pairs for each bucket. And uh, what this, there's a couple things that this allows us to do. First off is we don't have to worry about the size of the array because we never have to increase it, right? Um, we never have to worry about it um, because if, if it happened that this was filled up and these di weren't, didn't allow, we didn't allow uh, key value pairs to collide in the same bucket, then you'd have to increase the array size. So here we don't have to worry about that because we have a singly linked list for each bucket in this array we keep the same size. So this will always be size of six. And anytime there's a collision, we just add it on to the end of the single link list. And that's it. Okay, that's all we do. This is one of the easier ones to implement and easier to understand. Okay. Uh, so that's another one we're gonna talk about It's called linear probing. All right, this is when yeah, each bucket only holds a single key value pair. All right, so it this doesn't even allow collisions. All right, I mean, Whenever we believe there's going to be a collision, it handles it right away and doesn't allow two key value pairs to occupy the same bucket. So how does that work? Okay, so let's take a look. Let's, for an example, let's say we have index one, two, and four filled up with values. All right, and we want to insert um, two B. Okay, that's the key value pair we want to insert into the hash map. Now, what happens here is let's say Let's, uh, oops, let me go back one. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's say we have 2B and we want to insert it into the hash map and it outputs the index, an integer of one, which corresponds to the index in the associative array, okay? Well, that's occupied by the value A. So it can't go there, all right? So what it's going to do is going to say, okay, what's the next index? Well, the next index is two. Well, that's also occupied. Okay, so move on to the next one. What's the next one? That's index three, and that's not occupied. So it just found an empty index, and it, we can insert um, the value B into this hash map. Okay. All right, so that's, that's the basics of how hash map works. Okay, so again, uh, we, whenever you want to insert anything to the hash map, all this does is it goes through the hash function, which is two components. It is the hash code, which converts whatever key, an arbitrary key into uh, an integer value that could be negative or could be larger than the initial array or the array for the hash map. 
So then we have to go to the compression function, which means we put it in, we make sure it's um, between zero and the size of the array. And then there are ways to handle collisions when we have two different key value pairs going into the same bucket in the hash map. All right, and we want to try and eliminate collisions um, to make it easier to look to search or remove or other operations that are performed on a hash map. Okay. All right, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them and help you understand uh, even further. Okay. All right, thank you.